Hey there, welcome to another edition of What's Hot with C Tranquility. I'm your host, Pete Pardo, publisher and CEO of SOT. Today is Monday, November the 27th. Hopefully everybody had a uh, great Thanksgiving Day holiday. We are uh, back yet again with some more new music. Lots of new music always coming your way. Uh, I think we're kind of winding down on the year, though, so uh, we probably won't be coming at you as often in the coming weeks leading up to the uh, Christmas holiday. But in the meantime... We got a handful of really cool new things that have come out recently that I want to make sure you all know about. So the first is the brand new album from Swedish hard rock veterans Europe. Now, I know what you're going to say. Europe, oh yeah, the band, you know, Final Countdown, Carrie, yeah, whatever. You know what, if that's your opinion, then obviously you are a little late to the ball game because, you know, this band have really kind of changed their sound over the year. You know, they originally came out, uh, before the final countdown came out and hit really big, they actually released a couple of albums. Uh, Wings of Tomorrow, especially, is a killer, like a uh, late 70s style hard rock album. And, you know, one of the most underrated hard rock slash metal albums, I think, of the early 80s, in my opinion. And, you know, then they obviously hit it big with the final countdown album, a bunch of hit singles and whatnot. They kind of burst on the scene when all the, you know, U.S. hair bands were big. And I think they kind of got lumped into that category. Um, and it probably never should have, obviously. But, uh, you know, they continued to release albums, took a little bit of a break in the 90s, but they've been kind of roaring back really, really successfully over the last couple of years. Their last few albums have just been dynamite. There is no more of that kind of pop metal stuff going on anymore in the music of Europe. They have really developed into like a just heavy classic rock band with, you know, a lot of nods to like Deep Purple and Thin Lizzy and Black Sabbath, that sort of thing. That kind of just dark, bluesy, heavy rock. And, uh, you know, their last, I love their last album, War of Kings. I believe it was in my top 10 of the year. And they just released a new one called Walk the Earth. As good, if not better, than the War of Kings, folks. I mean, uh, just, again, that just heavy guitar riffs and heavy Hammond organ and Joey Tempest, very, very strong lead vocals. You know, this release, you get, it comes in a nice little digi, digi book here with all sorts of pictures of the guys in the band. Um, comes with a DVD, like a documentary on the making of the album. Very, very cool. There's some great tunes on here. You know, there's the guys here in 2017. Older and a lot wiser is still kicking ass. All right. A lot of, you know, the classic analog equipment and stuff here on display. Uh, ten tracks. Doesn't overstay its welcome. The title track is great. Uh, Kingdom United is kick ass. Uh, Election Day rocks. Uh, GTO is amazing. Haze is great. The last album, Turn to Dust, is like this kind of lengthy, moody epic that, uh, you know, a lot of the album reminds me a lot of like the Mark III era Deep Purple, specifically the Burn album. So if you like that style, okay, you know, a lot of guitar, a lot of Hammond organ, really soulful, powerful vocals, a lot of nice grooves, you know, atmosphere, it's heavy, it's dark, it's, it's just really, really good. I tell you, you know, there are a lot of bands out there, specifically from Scandinavia and Sweden especially, who are doing like that kind of retro 70s hard rock thing. Well, you know what? Europe have been around for a long, long time, and they've been doing that extremely well for, for decades, it seems. So don't discount this band. If, all, if, if you hear the name Europe and all you think of is the final countdown, you are really missing out, and you need to check out their last couple albums. Seriously, folks. Really, really, really great music. If you're a hard rock fan, if you love that kind of bluesy, dark, hard rock and early heavy metal from the 70s, like the mid-late 70s, you need to check this album out. Walk the Earth by Europe. It's killer. So, from there, we're going to move over to the Netherlands. Uh, a vocalist who, in my, in my opinion, kind of spearheaded a whole movement uh, back in the... She's the late 90s, I'm going to say. Forget the, the actual year. that This particular singer, she kind of burst on the scene with a band called The Gathering, who were kind of like a moody, doomy uh, metal band that had then later on moved, it became like, sort of like an atmospheric rock act. She uh, moved on to a solo career. She's guested on numerous albums by lots of other bands. She appeared, uh, she's uh, a band recently called The Gentle Storm. 
Uh, I'm talking about Annika von Giersbergen, and the name of the, her new band uh, is called Vuur, V-U-U-R, Vuur, Vuur, I'm not really sure how you say it. Um, in the moment, we are free dash cities. That is it right there. They are on uh, Inside Out, also owned by Sony. It says Annika's return to progressive metal. Pretty cool. She's got a... Uh, a couple of guys who have played, Ed Warby in particular on drums, who's played with her uh, many times over the years. Uh, full group, two guitars, bass, drums, and herself. This is pretty heavy, pretty rocking. It's kind of, it's, I would say, heavy, compared to the early Gathering albums that she appeared on, similar in heaviness, but that's more that was more coming from like a Doom kind of slant, where this is more strictly progressive metal. So lots of beefy dual guitar action going on here. The riffs are heavy. Her vocals are just stunning. They're powerful. They're angelic when need to be. Some of the songs have some cool atmosphere, a little bit of electronics bubbling around. But for the most part, it's just really good, crunchy, progressive metal. I dig it. Um, you know, she is, in my opinion, one of the best female singers on the planet uh, that ever kind of entered into the metal genre. And I think if it wasn't for Annika, you know, Bands like Nightwish and Epica and After Forever and Within Temptation and all that. Uh, who knows if we ever would have had anything resembling that because I think Annika kind of paved the way for that style. So make sure to check this out. Very, very good stuff. Speaking of very, very good. So here's a band that I'd never heard of before. Just, you know, one of, one of my writers here, uh, Stephen Reed from the UK. Uh, he's been with SOT for quite a number of years. He reviewed this album a couple months back and raved about it. And in his description of the album, he started throwing out, you know, some similarities to bands like Queen and Supertramp and 10CC and Styx. And, well, you know, that just kind of piqued my attention because I love all those bands. I love that kind of like um, hard rock slash pop slash pop slash progressive rock type of thing. And so I figured I'm going to check them out myself. And I did. And he was absolutely correct. This is a stunning release. It's by a band called Cats in Space. The album is titled Scarecrow. Uh, like I said, this is just really charming pop with a lot of hard rock and progressive rock elements. Uh, you know, I listen to this, I hear sticks instantly. Some of the choruses, a little queen, a little city boy, okay? Heavy ham and organ and keyboards at times, so you get a little bit of heap and purple. Uh, very cool guitar riffs. The vocals are stellar. Lots of like multi-track back backing vocals and pop melodies, and it just like it just like goes from like prog to pop to hard rock. It's just it's really really good. Uh, the tunes are instantly memorable, and it, it's just a real charming album by a band like I said that I had never heard of before. But I am obviously going to be paying close attention to going forward. So. Uh, don't take my word for it. Don't take Steven's word for it. Just go out and get this. It's called Cats in Space Scarecrow. Yeah. Another uh, album that's going to rank pretty high uh, at the end of the year, which is just about upon us. Be on the lookout for that. So from there, we're going to come back across the pond. We're going to go to Philadelphia. All right. So theirs has been a kind of neat underground progressive rock, psych, avant-garde, post-punk type of scene going on in Philly for a number of years. And this band that I'm going to talk about here, it, it draws members from a bunch of different bands that kind of make up those different scenes from the Philly area. And, uh, you know, Lynette Shelley is a name that should be pretty familiar to most SOT uh, readers and viewers. She has been the lead singer for the Red Mask for a long, long time. And we've done, you know, lots of coverage on the Red Mask over the years. So she is also in this band called The Green Cathedral. Winter's Veil vale is their debut album. Again, it's a collective of folks, musicians from various bands in the Philly scene. So they kind of bring all their influence together to create this really unique sound. Uh, that, you know, Green Cathedral, they're hard to explain. At times, you know, their music has a, a little post-punk edge to it. There's a lot of great pop melodies here. There's some dreamy uh, and sometimes you know vintage sounding progressive rock, especially coming from the keyboards. Uh, some of the guitar riffs have a hard rock slash punk edge. There's some kind of avant-garde stuff going on here, but you know throughout it all, there's like a pop flavor that permeates the music. So regardless of what kind of 
avenue, what kind of direction the songs are taking. Uh, they're held together by some really cool melodies and, and a really charming, like, kind of pop framework. So there's the uh, there's the band right there. All right. Got to like that background setting there. I dig it. It's good. Uh, give it a shot. You know, if you're, a, uh, if you're a fan of Lynette's and the Red Mask, not similar to that at all. But a um, lot of variety on this particular one, which I kind of like. A lot of atmosphere. Um, it's just good. It's just something really different. I always appreciate different. You know, we hear a lot of music here at Sea Tranquility. A lot of it sounds very similar to everything else, but it's great when a band comes around that tries to really bring together some different influences to create something new and fresh. So Green Cathedral, Winter's Veil, vale, check it out. All right, our last uh, regular release for today, it's kind of a short show, is an album that came out a few months ago. Uh, I'm only just kind of getting into today and uh, kind of a bittersweet one for me because this was released um, right around the time, or actually right after this particular artist had uh, left us, passed away. I'm talking about Greg Allman's uh, recent and last solo album, Southern Blood. You know, he was working on this when he already knew he was pretty ill with uh, liver cancer. And you can tell by listening to these songs, they're mostly cover tunes. There's one original song on here that is the, the kickoff track, My Only True Friend. And just listening to it and listening to the lyrics that Greg is singing, you know, you just know that he was well aware that his time on this earth was, you know, waning. And it's it's really sad. I mean, it's like there's some tunes on here. And again, this, it's mostly cover tunes, but kind of the way he's singing, I mean, he sounds spectacular for a guy who was dying. He sings some of the best vocals I've heard from him in quite a long time on this album, which is really good. It's, it's, a, it's not a very upbeat album. It's kind of bluesy. Um, there's some kind of like that alt country type of stuff going on here, that very rootsy kind of rock that a lot of people call country, kind of the blues country kind of hybrid. Um, he's got it cover tunes by all sorts of guys. There's some nice, you know, swampy blues stuff on here with some pretty cool guitar work. Uh, you know, you got the Hammond B3 and piano going on. Greg's vocals are stellar, like I said. Um, and the last song, you know, it's kind of bookends with two like really somber tunes. So there's that kickoff tune, which I mentioned, which is an original. And then the last tune is a song by Jackson Brown called Song for Adam, which Jackson Brown also guests and sings along with Greg on. That's another real, just like a, it just gets you right here. And you, for me, I've always been a huge Allman Brothers fan and a big Greg Allman fan. So, you know, listening to this for the first time and in successive spins, it's just like I, I, I like it a lot. But, man, it's just it's just kind of sad um, to think that this is this is it. Right. And, uh, you know. Good stuff, though, nonetheless. Good stuff. So with that. Our last bit of news for the day is Forgotten Favorites. So I got kind of a cool one. Band that I never heard of before until recently. I don't even I don't even remember how I discovered them, but uh, whatever I did, I picked up their one and only album. This is a German band that kind of, I believe they got together around 1968. They released this album in 69, and then by 1970 they were kaput. The band is called Orange Peel. Self-titled, only release they put out. Uh, this is basically, you know, if you think of the time period, this is kind of like the beginnings of kraut rock and psychedelic rock, right? So these guys came at you with, you know, some tremendous Hammond organ, ripping bluesy lead guitar, vocals, bass, and drums. Uh, there's only four tunes on this one and only release. They're all lengthy, so you've got, uh, you know, the first track is like almost 19 minutes long. Uh, then you got another three, then uh, they do a, a seven minute cover of Tobacco Road, and then the last track is over 10 minutes. It's just, it's really cool. You know, it's, uh, like I said, if you love that, like, early hard rock psychedelic sound, or, which basically is, you know, the beginnings of what we later called crop rock, you'll love this. If you love ha heavy Hammond organ and ripping lead guitar, what's not to like? Go seek this out. You know what? For the hell of it, I got another one sitting over here. So our second forgotten favorite of the day, only because I was just, I'm going to listen to this and it's sitting on my desk. So uh, this is another German band that kind of came in that next wave after Orange Peel and did a little bit of that kind of early hard rock, kraut rock. Then they eventually moved to like space rock and prog. I'm talking about Eloy. This is their amazing live album called Eloy Live. From the mid '70s, it's just got a bunch of tunes that uh, that were favorites up until that point, you know, because they would 
put out a lot of really cool albums throughout the 70s. So this came out right, you know, in mid, late 70s. I'm trying to remember exactly what year this came out in. Uh, let's see here, 1978. There you go. So um, a lot of good material on here. A great, great analog synths and ripping lead guitar from Mr. Frank Bornman. And uh, it's just a really, really good live album, underrated live album. If you've never checked out Eloy, they've got a lot of great albums that came out in the 70s. Uh, but if you want like just a first kind of glimpse of what the band is all about, by all means, check this out. It's a great live album. Killer, killer, killer. So with that, I'm going to leave you for another week. Uh, as far as like new release shows uh, between now and the end of the year, eh, we may have one more. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe two. Uh, I do have a couple of rants that I'm working on, so be on the lookout for that. But of course, you've got our best of 2017 end of the year shows uh, to look out for. So we're going to be again in Rock Fantasy probably a week before Christmas. And uh, me and the gang are going to run down some of our favorites of the year. And then I will do a separate show here in the house, here in the compound, here in the lair, uh, where I'm just going to talk about my top 10 favorites of the year. Okay, so I'll do 11 through 20 or 11 through 25. We'll see how it goes at Rock Fantasy with the guys. And then I'll do my top 10 uh, here. And uh, that'll round us out for the year. So till then, take care. Make sure you check out all this new music. Full reviews are on the website at www.catranquilly.org. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're here on the Mighty YouTube. So till next time, make sure you don't forget the classics. Check out all new stuff. But we'll see you next time.